What's up, everyone? All right, well, here we are, Monday morning, back in the saddle, green day, up 8,500. So as of uh, today, I've now officially recouped my loss from last Wednesday. I recouped most of it on Thursday and Friday, and the rest of it came through today. But it was a choppy morning. Our two leading gappers, both of them provided opportunities, both long and short. There was some volatility there. Uh, WHLM was up over 100% at one point, then came all the way back down, then was back up. Uh, PBTS, that was a kind of wild one as well, from $3 to $4.60, back to $3.40, then back up to four. So choppy, a little, you know, I mean, just not a lot of follow through. Predictable to a certain extent that it was gonna be choppy. I sort of expected that. The market has been slow the last few weeks. So I'm kind of just trying to set lower expectations and get what I can and not overstay my welcome. And that's kind of the name of the game right now. Just trying to keep my head above water and not dig myself too big of a hole. So I did have a loss on Wednesday, made it back Thursday, Friday, and the rest of it today. So I'm back to the sort of all time highs on the month, which is gonna be like $50,000 of profit. Not a lot for me, considering last month was over 300,000 and so was the month before. But at the same time, the majority of those profits in the last couple months have come towards the end of the month. And so I'm, I'm kind of okay with the fact that I'm green and I at least am not sort of deep in the red. So if things do pick up for the next two weeks and I have a couple of really solid days, I, I could have, you know, in theory, a 50, 60, 70,000 or even a $100,000 green day. Two of those, all of a sudden, just like that, turns the month around. And if those happen on the last two days of the month, then the month can go from being up 50 grand to being up 350,000, potentially. So I try not to get too bent out of shape if I'm kind of behind on my averages because during a choppy market, a slow market, a colder market, it's gonna be hard to keep good averages. You're just naturally going to be kind of struggling because the market's slower. So right now, taking it slow, one day at a time, got green, shut it down, walked away, and we'll break down those trades. And I hope you guys uh, tune in again tomorrow for the morning show. We'll be live streaming right around but any time between 8.30 and 9. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you get the notification when I go live. And as a reminder, as always, day trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money and you should trade in the simulator before you put real money on the line. Do yourself that favor that I wish I had done for myself. I started with real money and guess what? I lost real money just like every other trader out there. That's the process of learning with real money for most people is you jump in with real money and you lose it. So do yourself a favor, trade in a simulator. I'll see you guys uh, for the morning show. So enjoy the recap and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so uh, we're gonna break down the trades from today, finishing up $8,593.05. That's not bad, green day is good. I, um, I sort of set the bar low for myself this year. Uh, I, I said, you know, it's Monday, so I was like, if I make even a dollar today, I'm actually doing better than my Mondays um, on average this year. So I'll just pull this up to show you um, my, let's see, so let's go, uh, year to date since January filter. So since January, um, well, it looks like I've got, uh, well, no, we'll do net profit, which is after fees and commissions. So basically Mondays have attributed uh, nothing. I've got nothing here. I'm, I, d I can't even mouse over the number is so small, but it's not green. You can see it's a little red bar. So I figured if I made even a dollar, I'd be doing better than my average on Mondays. And I did make more than a dollar. I made $8,000. So just for that reason, I'm actually quite happy with this day. And I'm not trying to push it to get um, to 10,000 or to 15 or 20,000. I'm just, I'm happy with this, which is good. It's, an, it's enough and it's a good day. Leading gap or WHLM, that's where I made the majority of my profit. I traded it pre-market and I traded it at the open. Pre-market, the trade was the long right here for the break over the volume weight average price. And then uh, right into the open, there was a long here held all the way through the very bottom of this pullback, a small position. And then we got that rip on the red to green all the way up to 10, pullback up to 10.45. 10.45 was the high. And then we got a false breakout. 
Look at this false breakout right there. One minute micro pullback, false breakout, and it just flushes down to the VWAP. I tried to do a dip off the VWAP and I lost on it. It went into a halt. And so I gave back, I was up a little over 9,000 and I gave back maybe five, $600 on that trade. And at that point I said, you know what? That's it, I'm done. This was the leading gapper and it's failed. So PBTS, I got one trade on that pre-market. It actually did better than I thought, but it didn't do that well on it. So that's, well, you know, it's just the way it goes. Uh, my trade on it, uh, let's see, it wasn't there. It was actually uh, right here. I bought this because at that time it was a five minute bull flag, which I thought looked great, five minute bull flag. And it does a false breakout there as well, and then flushes down. So our two leading gappers, um, you know, neither of them look really good right now. And it's still early, it's only 10 a.m., uh, which on the one hand you could say, hey, it's only 10 a.m., you could still trade for another six hours today. Yes, on the other hand, it's 10 a.m., I'm up $8,500. I could actually enjoy the rest of the day and not sit here in front of my computer. So I like that idea a little bit better. Uh, so WHLM has come back down, PBTS has come back down, EARS was also on the gap scanner, that one's come back down. So I just don't see anything right now that looks that great. And, you know, again, given that it's a Monday, I didn't want to overstay my welcome. I sort of felt like, you know what, just take it slow. If you can get green and stay green, shut it down before you give it back. And so. Um, mission accomplished as long as I shut it down here and I don't uh, don't keep trading at all for the rest of the day. So I did see IKNA squeeze up uh, one, two halts in a row from 17 up to 27. I saw UTME rip up almost $10 a share. I mean, it's nice to see those moves, but they're on lighter volume and it, the market doesn't feel hot enough for me to be chasing those because the lighter volume with the bigger spreads, that creates a lot of risk. So I didn't wanna jump in any of those. I felt like I probably wouldn't be able to do very well on them, uh, just too much risk versus the reward. And then going further down the gap scanner, there really wasn't anything else that looked great. So we continue to be in kind of a quick little base hit market. There are some opportunities, there is some volatility, whether you're long or short biased, I mean, it, it varies. But of course, for those of us that trade in retirement accounts, we're not allowed to trade short in a retirement account. You can buy puts uh, on large cap stocks, but you can't short. So for that reason, uh, you know, we're really, we're in a position where we trade to the long side. Uh, we get the tax advantage of doing that. But when the market is a little slow, a little choppier, it just means being patient. And so I'm trying to be patient right now and just going to try to, get these gains and lock it up. Yes, I see ACY also squeezing here a bit. Again, though, on lighter volume. So when's the reversal coming, right? This is right now, it's like, oh, this looks great. I should jump in it. But that reversal, because you know it's coming. Let's look back at IKNA. It was looking really good until it wasn't. Let's look at UTME. It was looking really good until it wasn't. ACY is looking really good. Well, I don't know, what's it gonna do? Is it going to break 1250 and go to 13? Maybe. Is it going to break 1250 and go down to 1150? Maybe. It's hard to trust. And as a candle right now, like this is forming, you still have 45 seconds left on this current one minute candle. So if this broke below 1250, then this candle becomes a topping tail. If it breaks below 1250, uh, the open of this candle is 1248. So it all of a sudden could be a red topping tail. But there, it goes a little higher, it breaks through 13, goes up to 1345. And so some are gonna go without me. And that's just something I have to be okay with. I've got $8,000 in my pocket, chasing stuff like this. This is the one that maybe would have worked. IKNA is certainly one of the ones that did not work. It's down seven points off the high. UTME is down off the highs as well. So it makes it hard. The first two fail and the third one works. Well, what's the rhyme or reason there? And it doesn't, especially when there's no news on it. it, feels tricky. So you have to just try not to fall into those little traps in the market. 
I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bull trap. Maybe it does go. Maybe this is going to be a bear trap and it really squeezes short sellers. But it doesn't feel like the odds are in your favor right now because the overall strength in the market is just not as high as it was a couple weeks ago. So best to kind of not get caught into chasing and you know getting really excited on a stock that doesn't have news and probably a little risky. So as a reminder, uh, as always, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. And this is the type of market that crushes beginner traders because it's so choppy. What worked really well six weeks ago isn't working well now. And the patterns haven't changed, but the underlying conditions of the market are what have changed. And so uh, it takes a long time to learn how to trade through choppy markets to navigate these sort of bull traps and landmines to come out first with small losses only, second, maybe break even, treading water, or third, even with a little bit of profit. And that takes a lot of time. And I'm not always good at it myself. I sometimes do have really big drawdowns during the first couple days when a market slows down because I'm, I'm still in that hot market mindset. I'm being really aggressive. I'm thinking that everything is going to continue to rip. And I, I average down and it just sort of rolls into uh, bigger and bigger losses. Uh, for Warrior Pro students, um, I do encourage you guys to watch the Mindful Monday sessions hosted by Ted and Diane and uh, the FOMO Friday sessions also hosted by Ted and Diane. So we start the week and end the week with that kind of little dose of trader psychology just to help you kind of get into the mindset at the beginning of the week. And then at the end of the week, kind of decompress a little bit and let it go, relax, study on the weekend, and then come back Monday recharged and, and ready to work. So I hope you guys have a, a great rest of the day. I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. I hope that we do have some better opportunities. Um, hope is not a strategy. So, you know, I'm not gonna trade based on hope, but I can be hopeful that maybe we do start to see better action in the market. And when we actually see, you know, concrete proof of that, then that's when I will um, step up to the plate. All right, so that's, uh, that's the game plan. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. I hope you really enjoyed that video and make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers this year, but we won't get there without your help. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button.